Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. I'd like to talk today about the dietary micronutrients, uh, those that are essential to our health. Um, we can split the dietary micronutrients into two main groups, the vitamins and the minerals. Vitamins are organic compounds, minerals are inorganic compounds, and both vitamins and minerals are required for correct metabolic function because they usually associate with enzymes and they allow those enzymes to function correctly. Generally, we have a uh, range of metabolic pathways in our body, and those pathways produce substances and break other substances down to either release energy or produce substances that we need. The vitamins and minerals associate with enzymes that drive those reactions, and therefore, if we have a deficiency of vitamins and minerals, our metabolic pathways uh, are reduced in their activity. In other words, the flux through those pathways is reduced, and therefore the products of those reactions, which is either energy or substances that we, we require, uh, they become absent or in too low an amount to be able to support proper function. Uh, this is when we develop vitamin or mineral deficiencies. Now, there are a number of vitamins and there are a number of minerals. Uh, most of them uh, act as coenzymes, not all of them. Vitamin D, for example, is a hormone. It's not really a vitamin, but I'm talking generally about uh, what is considered to be uh, the normal role of a vitamin or mineral as cofactors to enzymes. Now, when we start to uh, have a, a diet that is missing in some of the vitamins or minerals, we develop uh, deficiency diseases that are specific to the vitamins that are absent from the, di and the diet. So for example, if our diet is low in vitamin C, uh, below about 60 milligrams per day, we start to develop scurvy. And that disease is specific to vitamin C. If for example, we have a diet that's too low in vitamin B1, also called thiamine, uh, we start to develop a disease called beriberi. Now these deficiency diseases are well characterized. Clinically, they're well understood. If you went into a hospital uh, with a deficiency disease, uh, it would become very apparent to the people who were uh, treating you that you had a deficiency disease. They could question you about your diet. The symptoms are very easy to see, and uh, it's very clear that you have a deficiency disease. However, in the West, uh, in Western nations in the developed world, we have access to lots of food um, and we don't have a shortage of food and generally uh, we're all very well fed. However, the food is low in certain micronutrients. So rather than developing actual deficiencies, many people in the West are now developing what's called insufficiencies. And this means a chronic low level of a particular vitamin or a mineral, often multiple vitamins or minerals that causes subclinical symptoms that are very difficult to detect because the person is on the borderline between a deficiency and between uh, a state where they have adequate levels of the vitamin or mineral and therefore their health is affected but they never fully develop a deficiency disease and this is increasingly being seen in the nutritional literature as a problem amongst western populations the food is devoid of many vitamins and minerals but they're there in high enough levels to prevent the deficiency diseases um, the outcome of this is lots of symptoms that appear to have no particular cause. Um, there are many um, symptoms that have been uh, recorded in uh, nutritional research that are biochemical changes that appear to elicit no real change in the body, but they are obviously having some effect on physiology. And this is the real problem. Without a clinical test to test the actual amounts of these vitamins or minerals we have, and some of these tests are very subtle, without these biochemical tests, it's very difficult to actually ascertain if you have a vitamin or mineral insufficiency. For example, during the winter, uh, it's acknowledged now that most people who don't supplement with vitamin D, who live at northern latitudes, who are quite high in, uh, above the equator or, uh, or, or low below the equator if they're in the southern hemisphere, um, those people tend to develop vitamin D insufficiencies. They never develop rickets or osteomalacia, which are the classic vitamin D deficiencies, but they have very low intakes of vitamin D in their diet. The sun is not adequate to produce enough vitamin D in their skin, and therefore their levels that they have in their plasma drop. There is vitamin D there, and there is sufficient there to prevent the deficiency diseases, but these people have subclinical uh, problems. And some of these problems over a lo the long term can include the development of cancer, they can include immune dysfunction, uh, and they can also include the risk of type 2 diabetes increasing because vitamin D is increasingly being seen as a, a requirement to prevent insulin resistance. So 
these subclinical uh, um, effects that these uh, insufficiencies produce are very difficult to detect because they occur over the long term. You may not realize you have a vitamin D insufficiency until it's too late and you've developed type 2 diabetes, for example. Um, so what do I suggest? What's the recommendation? Well, you obviously need to make sure, unless you're having regular biochemical tests for the whole range of vitamins and minerals, which really no one is going to be able to afford or practically uh, impl implement, what you really need to do is ensure that you have the maximum amount of micronutrients in your diet by eating a high quality diet. And you also need to take an insurance policy by supplementing with a multivitamin and mineral supplement in order to be able to make sure that on those days where your food doesn't contain the actual micronutrients that you need, where perhaps uh, those days when you don't eat quite a high enough quality diet as you should, uh, you need to ensure that you are actually taking in the required amount of vitamins and minerals every day. Um, and you want to be able to combine these two uh, things, a high quality diet and a multivitamin and mineral, to be able to ensure that you prevent uh, the dietary vitamin and mineral insufficiencies that are becoming more and more common in Western populations.